you are being watched. The government has a secret system, a machine that spies on you every hour of every day. I know because I built it. I designed the machine to detect acts of terror, but it sees everything. Violent crimes of ordinary people, people like you. Crimes the government considered irrelevant. They wouldn't act, so I decided I would, but I needed a partner. Someone with the skills to intervene. Hunted by the authorities, we work in secret. You'll never find us. But victim or perpetrator, if your number's up, we'll find you. Now, not really. Sorry if that intro was a little bit sinister, but anyway, like with Scorpion earlier this year, Person of Interest was another TV series that kind of just passed me by. I never even knew it was there. It ran from 2011 to 2016, and honestly, I never even knew it. I never even heard of it. But I was given it earlier this year, and I just, well, the first season of it earlier this year, and so, yeah, why not? I'll check it out. The first season comprised of 23 episodes that aired between September 2011 and May 2012. Now, to give you a brief overview of what this show is, because, like I said, I had never heard of it, so... You've got this man named John Reese, played by Jim Caviezel, and he's, he's an ex-soldier, and following a series of decisions and the death of a lover, he's kind of become a drifter in New York City, just kind of moving around the place, he doesn't really, he's mostly homeless and he's just trying to get through every day. However, he is hunted down by Emma and recruited by a man named Harold Finch, played by Michael Emerson. And what he essentially wants is this. Harold Finch was a member of a company and he's sort of like a millionaire and he tells John that he had created a machine. Now, this machine was designed to detect potential acts of terror. Like, view everything around New York and around America so that they would be able to stop sudden crimes before they happened. And they intended it for large-scale crimes, such as, as I said, terrorism. But he eventually found out that the machine actually detected everyone. Like, it could see everyone in New York City, and it knew everything about them. And he wanted to use it to stop any crime possible, but the people who made it said to him, no, we only want to use it to stop the big crimes. And the smaller stuff, no, that's for the police to deal with. He's just like, well, why even have the machine if we're not going to use it? So Harold recruits John, and they... The machine, which somehow is able to communicate with Finch, each time gives them a social security number of someone who they believe is mixed up in something big. And they have to try and find a way to deal with that person. But as they discover, pretty much in the first episode, it's not always as simple as a number comes up, that person is in trouble. Because, as I said in the intro, they could also be the perpetrators in it. I, in the first episode, essentially, they uh, advise to look at an official, and while it's at first assumed that she's gotten herself mixed up in some kind of drug cartel and is in possible danger, they mention to discover that she is actually spearheading the operation, and it becomes a little bit more complicated, and suddenly the show becomes not black or white, but speckled with shades of grey. And honestly, it works very well. They're assisted... Uh, partially by two members of the police department, Detective Josh, Joss Carter, played by Taraji B. Henson, a woman who's, m most of the time, she's looking into who Reese is and trying to find out what's going on, because most of the time, the only way she recognises that he's involved is a uh, witness is saying, a man in a suit, a tall man in a suit. So most of the time she's trying to hunt him down, trying to find out who he is. And the other member who they, the other member of the police department who they 
end up getting a line with is Detective Lionel Fusco, played by Kevin Chapman, who's, I believe the setup for him is, he's kind of a dirty cop. He's done some things he's not proud of, but Reese gives him a chance to kind of make himself better, exonerate himself and do the right thing, which sometimes does involve getting involved in their investigations. And there's also a ton of supporting characters who make the first season of the show pretty good, including a man named Carl Elias, played by Enrico Colantoni, who, while it seems at first he's just like an ordinary science teacher, it's eventually revealed that he is kind of a big shot in the gangster world. And he wants to take down a series of other gangsters, including his father. There's a woman named Alicia Corwin, played by Elizabeth Marvel, who is uh, a woman who knows about Finch's machine and believes it to be dangerous, and a woman who they consistently encounter named Zoe Morgan, played by Paige Turco, who's kind of like a, a woman of all trades. Like She's got her fingers in several pies, and they she eventually comes in to help them. And there are also a lot of, kind of notable guest stars in this, with the three that I recognise specifically being Robin Lord Taylor, who appears as... Um, I think he appears in the episode where a group of ex-cops or ex-soldiers are committing bank robberies. I recognise him specifically from Gotham. Uh, Enver Joe Kai appears in an episode I remembered him from Dollhouse. And Mark Magolis, who I remember from Breaking Bad, who is Carl Elias' father who, yeah, I, I honestly think this is a great show. The, the episodes are kind of hard to explain, and each one of them does go pretty dark, but I think my if I had to pick up a favourite from season one, I'd possibly say episode 18, Identity Crisis, where uh, John and Harold end up getting a new number, which seems to correspond to two different people. One is just a you know, simple guy working as a bar back, and... The other is a woman who kind of works in antiques. Now, they're both of the same name, which seems to be gender neutral, but they can't seem to work out who it is. And we did come up with several theories, but then ultimately, spoiler alert, it's revealed that one of them is a, kind of a crime lord in herself. Like The woman is revealed is a... She's been running a business selling ecstasy, while the other is trying to infiltrate her organisation in order to get his name back. And it does become quite complicated. But it provided me with a great time. Also, I think while the moment has probably passed, like while he's probably past the age bracket now, while I was watching the show, Jim Caviezel as John Reese, as I began to watch him more and more, I began to think, he's very really Bruce Wayne, like... Honestly, if he showed up in a TV show or a film as a new version of Batman, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, while I think Jim Caviezel now is probably past the age bracket at which he could play uh, Bruce Wayne or Batman, I, I did like him in this, and I did see the kind of Bruce Wayne aspects of him. So he seemed to me like, in the first episode when I didn't know who anybody was, I briefly thought he was uh, Christian Bale but I was eventually proven to be wrong. But to me, he's kind of like a midway point between Christian Bale and Ben Affleck. So I could definitely have seen him in a Batman show or a Bruce Wayne show at some point. Maybe not anymore, but I definitely could see that. And he definitely had those kind of aspects of him. Like, I felt John Reese was very much a Bruce Wayne type figure, while Harold Finch was a bit more Lucius Fox. At least that's why I saw the show. But anyway, the first season of Person of Interest, I actually thought it was really interesting. Whether it's a show I'll continue with in the long term, well, we'll have to wait and see for that. But Person of Interest, season one, I actually thought it was pretty good. I know Jim Caviezel kind of got in trouble a bit on the set over the years, but for, for the first season, I actually think Person of Interest is really interesting. Anyway, the final episode of season one does end with a bit of a shift and a bit of a cliffhanger as uh, Harold is contacted by, well, kidnapped by the last person of interest they were looking into, who turns out to be a hacker they had previously encountered. And then, uh, as John Reese kind of wonders what he's going to do, he ends up looking at security cameras, he knows the machine is listening, and saying, right, I lost him because of you, you're going to help me find him. And it does provide a nice, good setup for season two, 
So, season one of Person of Interest, I give it a thumbs up. It was it was interesting to watch. It was a show I was unfamiliar with, and it really provided a good time. So there you go. That's my thoughts on the first season of Person of Interest. And until next time, see ya.